Hello and welcome to our video lecture about pattern recognition within FPGA. In this video we have a look at the circuit architecture and VHDL implementation. In the last video we saw that we want to have a neural network with a certain number of nodes and we also did training to find out the configuration of the neural network. And um, for our implementation, we use an approach of stream processing. So with every clock cycle, we get a new pixel and uh, our architecture then performs a processing pixel by pixel. So the processing speed is the same as the pixel frequency. Let's have a look at the block diagram. Our input signal is RGB, red, green, blue with 8-bit uh, for each color channel. And as a first step, we convert it to an 8-bit grayscale image because this is uh, the data we want to use. Then we have our input pixel and we delay it with six line memories by 1280 pixel each so that we get seven pixels that are above each other. In the next step, we delay each of these seven lines with uh, six flip-flops so that we get the current pixel plus six previous pixels, so seven pixels in total, and we get a region of seven by seven pixels, so 49 pixels. This is quite a lot, but this is what an FPGA is good at. Having a lot of data, having a lot of interconnections, then we give our 49 pixels, the seven by seven region, to the neural network. And this is the network we saw in the previous video with 37 hidden neurons and four output neurons. And then we get the four outputs for the four symbols that we have. And in an application, you could now do post-processing of this information. So uh, having a CPU there to draw conclusions or um, taking in another image filter there. In this example, we want to have a look at the result and therefore we do output processing. So we convert the result of the neural network to a visual representation. The neural network is um, in a structure that we saw in the previous video. So you have uh, individual neurons that are connected to each other. The structure of the neuron itself has been described in earlier videos um, that we have in the NN RGB FPGA series. Here is uh, the image from that video. So uh, we have uh, a module where we get the input signals, then we multiply with the factors, we add the bias, and um, we have uh, a sigmoid function in a lookup table. However, the structure we have here is much larger. So we have uh, 49 inputs or 37 inputs, but the basic principle is the same. And uh, now we have a look at the VHDL code to represent our circuit. The top level entity is called NN pattern, and uh, the complete design was mainly done by a student of our university, Mr. Steffen Reckels. Here is the entity with video input, video output. The input signals, red, green, blue, are converted to grayscale according um, to this calculation. And then this grayscale image goes into MPU. This is uh, MPU. And here we have a memory unit to store the 7x7 region. Let's have a look at that function. The input signal is stored in six line memories. And then the output of the line memories is stored in individual pixel to give the 7x7 seven seven region. So this is the 7x7 seven seven region of um, the input pixel array. Um, we also give out um, the center pixel for overlay of the image. Here is the line memory. This is something um, we had also in the previous design. So we have an array with uh, 1280 pixel of 8-bit. 
let's go back to the MPU. The output of the memory unit then goes into the neuron unit. So these here are the, un uh, the neurons. Let's go to that. The neuron unit has a generate function. And also this structure has been illustrated, has been explained in previous videos. So if you want more background, please have a look there. You have the input data and then you do a generation of this neuron input 49. So this is the neuron with the 49 inputs and all the coefficients are in the config file that we saw in the previous video. So the config file contains all the factors for a neural network. It's generated by the Octave script and here uh, the information from that config script is uh, processed. This is uh, the hidden layer and then we have the output layer with the 37 neuron input, the submodule neuron input 49 it has a generate statement where we have uh, the weights from the configuration file. These are constant values and multiplies them with the input values. And because we have 49 values, we need an adder tree. We cannot add all the 49 results from the multiplication in one step. We have um, first intermediate sum, then we add together the intermediate sums, and uh, then we add the bias. Here is uh, the sigmoid function. So we have a limiting uh, if statement, and then we have a um, lookup table for the sigmoid function. This also has been described in an earlier video. Neural input 37 does the same, but with uh, another adder tree. Therefore, we have different modules. Back to MPU. Here we have a delay of this center pixel. This is just a delay by 16 clock cycles. And then the result of the neural network and this um, center pixel goes into the manipulation unit to generate the output information. And um, this is the manipulation unit. So here we have uh, the symbols. And uh, according to the value of the symbols, we check if the symbols are larger than a threshold. Threshold is a value. We have eight bit values here, so 0 to 255. Uh, the threshold is 127. If symbol 0 is larger than the threshold, we detected a filled circle, a dot, and we indicate this by dark yellow, so we set red, green, blue to these values. Else, we check if symbol 1 is larger than the threshold. Um, if yes, this is the open circle. Um, and um, we get a green output value. Else, this corresponds to X and this is set to blue. Um, this would be the cross and this um, is indicated by a red output pixel. If none of these symbols are detected, we uh, give the input value to the output. And for better visibility, we brighten up the input pixel. We use an offset of 192 and add the input pixel divided by 4. And this is our output value. The code is available on GitHub, so you can download it to make your own experiments. Next step in the design is simulation. And uh, for simulation, uh, we also have a test bench that uh, has been explained also in another previous video. As an input data, we need one image. And um, this image uh, is used in the PPM format because this is a file format that can be used by TestBench. To derive that, we take the video of our symbols and um, we take a single image. This can be done, for example, with the VLC player. And then we convert that image to the PPM format. And uh, the tool I use for that is IrfanView. And if we now have a PPM input image, we can go to the test bench. The test bench is a copy from the design of an FIR filter. It's uh, copied from Zim Sharp and described in another video. We change the entity name. 
we change the name of the input and output image and we change the name of the design under verification. And then uh, we can use that test batch. For simulation, we use the model sim simulator in the Questa Intel Starter Edition. And uh, we compile all the required VHDL files. Then we invoke the architecture sim of sim and pattern. And we start the simulation. This takes some time because it's a large design depending on your computer. This may be 15 minutes. You get some warnings because initially some of the values are undefined. And then the simulation is complete. And from the simulation, we get an output file where we see the result of the processing. This is the image in 720p format. And uh, we zoom in a little bit and we can see that um, the results uh, show that the symbols have been detected. So we see the different symbols and we see the colors. And I will discuss this output in the video about FPGA implementation and result. At the edge of the output image, we see some errors. This is because um, the edges uh, do not fit into the 7x7 region. So um, let's have a look here. Um, you see that there is an overlap um, of uh, the 7x7 region with the border. Therefore, we have to um, disregard these uh, output pixels. And uh, also, there would probably be some post-processing for the symbols. In the next video, we have a look at FPGA synthesis and um, I will show some real-time video of the output of the FPGA.